What's going on survivors? Welcome to Survival Schoolhouse. My name is Leif. I was a prior Air Force survival instructor for close to 20 years. I've been through the gamut of conditions, one of them being the Arctic, whether that being on top of a mountain practicing, different types of survival scenarios What's and going techniques, on, survivors? all the way up to it's Alaska, cutting out snow out blocks right and making igloos as well. So let me show you some of the clothing and sleep system that works well for me. The main thing that's going to come up that you're going to have to deal with is your perspiration. Moisture management is the name of the game when you're out there in the Arctic. So you need to be able to wick away that sweat and then have a warming layer and then a weather layer on the outside. Wicking, warming, and then weather. So let's think about those three things as we go through it. So starting with our feet, we have our wicking layer, which is a thin wool pair of socks. And then the next is a thicker wool pair. And if it'll fit in your boot and if it's cold enough, you can even go to a third pair of socks, but usually you don't need to do that. Wool is the name of the game when you're out there. Keeps you warm, even though it gets wet. So then you have your boots right here. And then this is a muckluck style boot. It's not made out of fur, it's a military style. It has rubber on the bottom. It is not waterproof. Things don't need to be waterproof in the Arctic because it's so cold out there if it's 20 below, 30 below. The snow is not gonna stick to your clothing. So when you wear these things, it feels like a pillow on your feet. Now at the bottom, a trick is you have two pairs of, of wool liners on the bottom. And then you have your main liner for your boot. If you don't have these in there, or you just have one, and it's real cold outside, you're gonna be cold. Now this is a, a wool liner, but this is pretty thin. And then on the inside of it, it has, this is a, a synthetic type boot liner that's a little bit thicker, and then definitely keeps you warmer there. So in conjunction with your socks, all that insulation there, and your liner, that's all you need and then cover it up with some cloth. The next thing that works better than snow pants that just go around your waist right here are a pair of bibs. So when those are around your body and then it goes up to your chest up here, keeps a lot of your torso warmer. And especially when you're bending down doing things, your jacket doesn't separate and expose your back a bit or some of your layers and keeps you a lot warmer. So bibs, Carhartt bibs work great. We use those all the time growing up in Minnesota. These are just a pair of old Dickies bibs that work well. And I wore those. And most of these clothes right here I used in my negative 40 degree wind chill video where we slept out there. So those bibs work great. The other style of boots that we use in the Arctic are military bunny boots. It's two layers of rubber on the outside and inside. And so moisture management can be a problem. But in between those two layers of rubber are thick pieces of wool inside there. So they really keep your feet warm. And it's really tomato to model. People like both styles. Your feet get wetter in the other style, but it's real easy to keep your boots dry. You don't have to try and dry these out at the end of the night if you need to by putting these in your sleeping bag or trying to force dry them some other way. Usually you cannot have a fire in the Arctic because there's no trees to start a fire out there. So your clothing is your first line of defense and then it's your shelter after that. The next layer moving up from the bottom before we get to the bibs is your wicking layer for your legs. And so wool is better here. This one's synthetic, but a wool base layer. And then you have a warming layer. Uh, this is just a checkerboard type thermal. You can find those anywhere. And just something that's gonna provide some dead air space before you get to your weather layer on the outside. And same thing on the top. I wore this smart wool top this is a wool shirt right here, a plaid wool shirt. And then just this jacket when it's 40 below wind chill. We're moving and it was nice and warm. And if I had to warm up or layer up, another good layer to put on would be another nice thick stout layer of wool on the outside too. Now you can use synthetics as well. A lot of the newer synthetics still keep you warm even when they're a little bit wet. But wool is a little bit better in the long term especially when you're out there for days on end. And then on the outside, you have an Arctic jacket. So this one is not wool. It has Primaloft insulation, which is a good insulation. 
kept me really warm when I was out there. And important characteristics are a nice long style jacket that goes down pretty low. And so it's covering up that layer where air can be escaping and cooling you off. So it's going down pretty low. It's pretty thick, but not restrictive. Any of the clothing that I have should not be restrictive in cutting off circulation. The hood, what you want to look for is one that goes in front of your face. And so that really helps with the wind. And this fur right here really helps trap some of that air and really keeps you warmer. Now this is a smart wool hat on the top. And then this Mad Bomber style hat with rabbit fur really keeps you warm. And this fur layer on top right here really helps with keeping your forehead and eyebrows warm right in that little gap. Especially if you're wearing goggles, which you should have on as some type of eye protection if it's real windy, as well as sun protection too. So not just clear goggles going around the outside. And you're gonna be extremely warm with this style hat. If you get a little warm, fashion it towards the top right here, snap it up towards the top or take it off. And most of the time I didn't even wear a thin wool hat on the top. I just wore straight the Mad Bomber style hat. And then with your hands, you cover them with two layers of some type of wool, which really helps. These are wool finger gloves. You can also use wool mittens. I did not like these because with these two layers here, it was way too tight on the thumb. So it was a poor design on this part. Although I would have rather have had mittens with these. What you can use are an over mitten on the top. And so why do you think there's fur on the outside of these mittens? To wipe your nose? No, it's to put up, up on your face if you need to. And then really help warm your face up quickly when you're out there. And so these are big style gauntlet choppers, chopper mittens as we call them. And it has a piece of line on the outside so you can take your mittens off and then hang them around your neck. Do things, you're not setting them down in the snow and put them right back on. Because you're pretty frequently taking your mittens off to do different things. The ones that I've been using the most are the same thing here. This has a nice wool liner on the inside. But the thing that I do not like about these mittens is too tight around the wrist here. And so it cuts off circulation just slightly. And so when you have it, a wider one like this is gonna be a lot better for you. And you also wanna have a balaclava or a neck gaiter. And then make sure that's wool as well. And so what's better about a neck gaiter than a balaclava, a balaclava is just a hood and that goes around your face. You just have a straight neck gaiter. It's a little bit more versatile to where you can move it around. You can move it all the way up like that. You can keep it right in front of your face. And the big advantage to this is when you have it in front of your face, it starts to frost up after an hour or two. And then what you can do is just move it to the back of your neck your body heat's gonna dry that out and help keep it dry, and then you can put a dry spot up towards the front. Now, it's not the most fun to do that when it's 20, 30 below outside, but you just gotta fight through and do it, and it really makes things a lot better. So a neck gaiter is real important because you really need to be monitoring your extremities, your nose, your cheeks, your ears, and then your fingertips as well. It's pretty simple being out there in the cold and I actually like being in the cold because you can always layer up. Now, when you're cold, it can be pretty miserable. So it's important to have enough layers. But again, moisture management is important. This was good enough for a lot of the tasks I was doing, just wearing this and the thin wool. The jacket was able to move, bellow out some of that moisture as I was going. I could open it up slightly, get that moisture out, and then I was able to stay nice and warm, especially with that wool once again. If you just use these parameters of wicking, warming, and weather, try and stay with wool, try to avoid circulation issues and cutting off circulation on your extremities, you're gonna be fine no matter how cold. You just need to layer up just a little bit more. The big thing that's easy to forget is make things too tight, especially on your feet. People like to tie their boots tight that's a big no-no. Keep them as loose as you can without your boots being too floppy all over the place. Same thing with your hands. With these, sometimes they're almost too tight or around the wrist can be a little bit tight. And so trying to get a size up and make sure you have a lot of that dead air space in there 
and then you're going to be fine. You're going to be a lot warmer. Then, so at the end of the night, when you're ready to get into your sleeping bag, the trick is to try and keep a bunch of snow out of your sleeping bag before you get into it. Now, your sleep system is important when you're out there for the long term. Moisture management, once again, because just in one night, if you're breathing on the inside of these things, it's going to create a whole bunch of frost or a whole bunch of frost right on your sleeping bag. So down in the extreme cold is kind of a no-no where I don't really like it that much unless I'm trying to cut a whole bunch of weight. This is all down right here. And I used this a couple times. I used this in the last video. But if you're using down for the long term for an extended trip, you really have to be careful about not breathing inside your sleeping bag. Because once you breathe inside it down, all that insulation is going to compress when it gets wet and it's not going to do any good for you. So synthetic is actually better in the extreme cold type environment. So you can use these general parameters with whatever sleeping bag you have when you're in the Arctic. So this right here is just a Gore-Tex style or a Gore-Tex outer layer, which really helps with your moisture management and helps keep snow on the outside, especially when you're getting in and out. So on the inside right here, we have a total of three warming items. You have this large outer sleeping bag right here. That one's only rated to 40. This one, this Marmot Helium, this is old, it's probably 15 years old. It was rated about 15 degrees. So it's still somewhere in there, but it's lost some insulation. And then this is just a blanket that goes on the inside. This is actually a hammock under quilt that he used as a blanket sometimes when it's real cold. And that makes a huge difference having a blanket inside there. Another thing that I've used for years is a military style wooby, right? Because they say it's a wooby because you would be cold without it. And this is just a synthetic blanket and just any style blanket inside your sleeping bag. You can stuff your jacket down low inside your sleeping bag, put your feet around that. And it's also good to wear some socks. Check out my uh, sleeping bag video on how to sleep and stay warm in any sleeping bag. Now underneath you could just use a foam pad. This is ready to keep you warm, but it's better to be thicker. You know, so if you have, this one is a Thermares Mondo King if you're car camping. This gets about this thick. Any style that's that thick is going to be warmer than something thin like this. But usually you can't be packing around, you don't want to be packing around five to ten pounds of poly pad. So you can use an inflatable and then put this on top because you're ready to sleep on the ground with this. Why not just put it on top? Then you don't have to heat up the air inside your inflatable pad. All in all, pretty easy things to keep warm when you're out there. The trick is to stay warm for long term for days on end to try and keep that moisture management going. Hey, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to. Keep surviving.